Well, let's see, the weatherman screwed up again. I ordered rain, not wind. Who in here wasn't speaking clearly? So we got wind. But uh, good to see everybody out this morning. As I usually start off, uh, how many people's first time you've been to one of our seminars? Okay. Anybody's first time you've been in the nursery? Okay, very good. Well, welcome, guys. And I always like to, you know, other people may get tired of hearing it, but the way we do these is in a very informal fashion. If you have questions as we go along, stop me. If it's appropriate, I'll answer them then. If it's something I'm going to answer or cover a little bit later, I'll put you off for a few minutes. But uh, don't hesitate to ask. There is no such thing as a dumb question. Back in my teaching days, I always found that the kids thought they had a dumb question. At least two-thirds of the class wanted an answer to that particular question. And the other game we play is now if there's anything that you don't want to admit is in your own yard, you simply stick up your hand and say, well, my neighbor couldn't come and they wanted me to ask you about this. And I pray everybody around here knows how that works now, but you can still try and we'll pretend that we don't know that it's uh, your yard that those things are going on in. Uh, it's going to be a challenging year, uh, as I'm sure everybody's probably heard by now. The driest 18 months we've had since they started keeping weather records back in the 1850s or something like that. Uh, we should have had 40 inches of rain in that period of time. I think we've had 17 or less. Uh, to me, even more telling is the rains that we've had, for the most part, have been so light. Um, I don't know how many of y'all are really interested in weather, but if anybody's really interested in weather, there's a real neat website uh, that you might want to write down. It's C O C O. R-A-H-S, C-O-C-O-R-A-H-S dot org. Don't worry, the sides will blow, but this thing isn't going anywhere. If you look at how we built this building, it's not going to blow over. That's no, no concern there. But anyway, it stands for Communities Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. And it is a very interesting thing. I think it's more interesting, of course, during times of rain. But uh, you can actually click on most of the states in the country are in it now. You click on a state, then you can click on an individual county. Actually, the first thing you click on is a precipitation map. And there are a bunch, literally thousands of people across the country that every day report how much rain they've had or snow or hail or whatever else. And to me, it's just real interesting that when we get into a rainy period, like where I'm in Kendall County, I think we've got about 16 or 18 people in the county to report, and you can look in and see how much rain has fallen in all the different parts of the county. And there are ways to go back and look at cumulative rainfall and things like that. But anyway, the point that I was going to come to is uh, we were looking at uh, really the past year how many times we have had an inch of rain at one time. And it takes at least an inch of rain to wet the ground very much. We've had three times, I think in the past 11 or 12 months, we've actually gotten an inch of rain. So even though we've had 11 or 12 inches of rain this year, so many times it's been, you know, a tenth of an inch. Oh, 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 oh. I guess they're both four-letter words, rain and wind, but uh, anyway, we want rain next time, but maybe not this violently. But anyway, um, when things are just desperately dry, and I tell you that, just we're, our topic for today is general maintenance of your landscape. We're going to talk about fertilizers and mulches and nematodes and trichogramma and iron and things like that. But the main thing that most landscapes are going to need uh, is going to be water. And watering is very, very important that you do it right. Um, and the, the real problem that we're looking at right now is the subsoil layers have gotten so dry. We're starting to see damage to native plants. If the weather stays like this, we're going to see damage to native trees and just about everything out there. And the things to remember about water is when you water, water really, really thoroughly. 
I think that I blame sprinkler system companies. I think they want you to watch your product work and feel good about it. So they so often set the sprinklers to run three times a week for 15 minutes or something like that. That is the worst possible way to water anything. You need to be watering as we move into warmer weather. Your grass needs about an inch of water a week. And you should get that all at one time. So whether you're using an automatic sprinkler system or a sprinkler on the end of the hose, or in my case, I can't water. We can't legally use even a sprinkler on the end of the hose in Kendall County. That's how dry we are. So my grass is pretty brown. But put out some little, you know, empty cat food cans or some straight-sided dish or something like that and time how long it takes to run an inch of water into that container. That's how long your system should run or that's how long your individual, you know, you should leave the hose running in any one spot with the sprinkler on it. You need to put down at least an inch of water at a time to do much good. That's for grass. That is not enough for trees and shrubs. Uh, with trees and shrubs, you need to really soak them thoroughly. That may mean turning the hose on slowly and leaving it out there running all night or something like that. We really, uh, I just can't tell you how dry those soil layers are. And uh, it's just, just a matter of let it run and soak and soak and soak. Your foundation's the same way. This is going to be a bad year on foundations if the weather doesn't change because we live basically on its expansive clays and they shrink and contract, shrink and contract. So you're doing your foundation a favor at the same time that you're doing your plants a favor by watering them properly. Soaker hoses, I have mixed feelings about them. I've never found a soaker hose that really works well for an extended period of time. We have so much calcium in our water that they tend to plug up. If you use soaker hoses, one of the most important things that you do is have a pressure regulator on that hose. Otherwise, if you just turn the hose on, you're going to find that about 80% of the water comes out in about the first five feet of the hose. And a pressure regulator can be very simple or it can be complex. I know at one point we're getting a line of soaker hoses and what they used for a pressure regulator was a little plastic chip that was just the same size as the end of the hose and it was pressed in there and it had just one little hole in the middle of it, like a little tiddlywink with a, about an eighth of an inch hole drilled in the middle of it. That's an effective, an effective pressure regulator. Uh, or you can spend four or five bucks and get the little bit fancier one. But if you're going to use soaker hoses, you need to have a pressure regulator. Now, if you are putting several soaker hoses together, if you're hooking them in line, only one pressure regulator in front of the first one. But uh, again, I. You know, I've had very mixed results, and I've never yet found a drip system that really works for any long length of time here. But bottom line is, whatever it takes, we're going to have to get water to our plants. Now, San Antonio is very fortunate. The other aquifer has stayed very high this year, probably because it extends way out west. And you go very far west, they're quite wet. Amistad Reservoir is two feet over Conservation Pool, which is the fullest it's been in its history. It's just all, they're getting all their water out there, so that apparently has had a very positive effect on the Edwards Aquifer, but uh, those of us in the Hill Country are suffering a whole lot more of our Trinity, Glen Rose, and Cal Creek, and things like that. So, watering is critically important. Uh, don't water at night. Water very early in the morning if you can. Four or five in the morning is fine. You don't want to water in the evening because you leave things wet. You make them much more susceptible to fungus disease. And wherever possible, try to keep the water off the foliage of your plants. Uh, fungus diseases, be it black spot and roses, mildew on crepe myrtles, anything else, fungus diseases are spread by spores that float through the air. If a fungal spore lands on a dry leaf, nothing happens. Fungal spore lands on a drop of water on a leaf, it can germinate, grow, penetrate the leaf, and cause problems. The number of fungal spores in the air goes up immensely, probably goes up a thousand fold after dark. So we really would like to have the foliage of our plants dry at night. That's why we don't recommend evening watering. Water in the evening, you will have more problems with the brown patch in your grass, with uh, mildew and black spot and the other associated problems. So enough about water. It's critically important to do it and do it right. I hope we don't have any newcomers that came from up north and say, oh, our grass stove goes dormant, so we don't water during the winter. If you didn't water in the winter this year, 
you know, be putting in some new grass this spring. And I'm afraid there's going to be a lot of dead grass when people, you know, start watering and their grass doesn't come out. A lot of people have let their landscape get way, way, way too dry and expect to see a whole lot of dead grass. Hopefully none of y'all, hopefully none of your neighbors.